Hi everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest XI. Uh, and in the last part, we were finally able to head into... Uh, we got Cetacea, so now we can go up and explore the um, islands that are up in the sky. Uh, and continue on to the next story point. But, we're not doing that. <laughs> Uh, first thing we're going to be doing is we've got one last side quest. This is actually the last side quest for like the main game. So for like the um, the first two kind of sections before we get to the epilogue section. So this is the last quest that you can do. Uh, so get out of the way now if you want to do all these. I think I've already missed like a couple. So, but um, this one is well worth going out of your way out of your way to do because you learn, you get a recipe book which creates some of the strongest weapons in the whole fucking game. So go talk to him and Arboria, and then we want to head to this room, to this place here, and go up to the very top floor. Uh, we've then got to talk to uh, this butler here. Do collecting on her behalf. Uh, she picked up a particularly rare volume, which is what we want. Uh, so yeah, she gave it to a woodcutter who stayed here um, and took it with him when he left. Uh, so yeah, so we need to go to, um, uh, what's the name of the place? The Mangle Grove. I remembered. I, it didn't just come up. Uh, <laughs> go to the Mangle Grove and we need to go to the woodcutter's hut. Um, uh, go to this corner and to this book, red book in the corner and Yep, this is the, uh, this is what we need. Uh, basically, uh, the minstrel for our, in Arborea it was trying to remember a song. Um, and he, I think he had, like, the last part of it. I think it was the first part of it, but he didn't have, like, the last line. Or the last, like, uh, the last, um, uh, few lines. So of the song, so now we've got it, we zoom back to Arboria, and we go talk to him. Alright, and with that, yeah, it's a really easy quest to complete, and for it you get a really good um, item, so go talk to him, and hand him the second part of the letter, the second part of the song. Uh, and so basically, I think it's a song which basically um, talks about um, Yggdrasil, and it's basically like a oh, that's what it was. It's basically like a love letter from um, Serenica to um, Erdwin the Luminary. So it's actually kind of cute <laughs> that you know it's basically a love letter written by Serenica to give to. Um, Erdwin, who never got it. And we get the recipe book things to do with Metal Goo. And what we get, Metal Slime Swords, Metal Great Swords, Metal Goomerangs, Metal Slime Spears, Metal Slime Shields, Metal Slime Helms, and Metal Slime Armor. So basically, some of the strongest armor and weapons in the whole game. Um, problem is that you need the metal... Um, like the the metal globules that we've been collecting you need to get those in order to uh, in order to make them and you don't find a lot of them so it can be a pain in the ass uh, and you can't buy the metal globules i think as materials so if you want to create them you've got to make a choice on what you want best thing to get is the metal uh sword is to get the the metal slime sword, the metal slime great sword. Uh, get trying and then get the metal slime um, spear. Um, get all of those, and yeah, that's pretty much all you need at this point. Everything else is a uh, kind of. I mean, if you can get, if you have enough to make the armor as well, then. That would be well worth it, but uh, what you want to get more is like get the swords and get the spear to boost um, three party members of, like uh, attack power. 
It's not really that. But yeah, it's well worth going out of your way to do that quest so you can get it. Anyway, what we're we doing now? What are we doing now? <laughs> so basically, there are a bunch of um, islands uh, up in the sky. And what we're going to be doing first, instead of continuing on with the story, we're going to be exploring the other small islands which have some items on us for us to collect. Uh, and this is the first one, the Sniffleheim Railway Station. And this area is pretty good for grinding. There's some pretty strong enemies uh, uh, here to fight. And on top of that, there's also, you get Ice Crystal, uh, Sapphire and Ethereal Stone. These are all pretty rare items for you to get uh, crafting materials, so it's a pretty good place to get stuff. Um, there's also a chest, I think. There's also, a, yeah, like a giant, uh, like, frost dragon here as well, so you can get a good amount of um, experience from fighting enemies here. And we get a recipe book. What do we make? Emperor's attire and Empress's robes. Uh, they are good for, um, they're good for Rob and they're good for Serena. So yeah, make those as soon as you can as well. They're pretty fucking useful. So yeah, this is, let's get rid of the Otter Shambles first, which is a good pun. <laughs> what am I doing? Let Frizzle. Kill it. There you go. There you go, Serena. Yeah, Serena's pretty fucking useful at this point because now she has all of the abilities. Um, she has all of her abilities, so she can heal and um, cast debuffs on enemies. But uh, cast buffs on the party, I mean. But she also has um, Veronica's moves, so she has super powerful attack magic, as well as having the ability to um, cast debuffs on enemies as well. So she's pretty much the ultimate magic caster for this game. Now we're moving on to the next railway station. Uh, this one is the Lost Land. Uh, this is one that's completely new. This is an area that you can only only get to via the uh, above ground. Because a lot of them basically are like uh, islands up in the sky. Uh, which ha are connected to other places that we've been to, like, for example, the Sniffle Sniffleheim and places like that. But here, this is a completely new place that you can't access at all. This is the only way you can access it. That rainbow piece of material that we got there as well is this, I think this is the only place that we can get it. Um, yeah, this has some very rare um, crafting materials like the colourful cocoons. And the glimmer grass, so yeah. It's a good place to come up to, and there's a load of tockles here for some reason. Well, tockle spirits in any case. Okay. Yeah, they're kind of all just climbing on up this structure. Uh, there's another thing that we can get here as well, I think. So yeah, mostly this place is for getting good materials. But there's also a chest for us to find. We have to go around the back. Uh, where are we? I'm sure there's one here. I know there's one here. Yeah, keep going. There it is. <laughs> Don't make a liar out of me, game. And here we get a recipe book, Good Godly Gear. Uh, Sacrosanct Staves and Venus's Tears. Uh, the Sacrosanct Staves are... Uh, ones which are pretty powerful. Uh, the Venus's Tears, I think they are uh, they improve they are an accessory which increases MP, I believe. So, pretty useful to come here. Now, the thing is, there's a massive keyhole that we don't have access to yet. So, we can't actually do anything with this place. Just collect your shit and go. Now we're going to the Champ Sauvage. Railway station. Uh, yeah, so basically these places, these islands they are in the sky, they're basically uh, to collect a lot of materials uh, that are rare and they're also to uh, uh, fight 
really strong enemies so that you can level up more efficiently. Um, now there are some enemies that you'll face which are pretty weak, but for the there are some railway stations which have a lot of really strong enemies for you to deal with, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And they have places like this as well, where the enemies aren't particularly strong. Um, but basically there are a, a lot of them that they'll keep, and they'll keep respawning. So they're pretty, so you can grind levels pretty easily here as well. <sighs> we can't do anything with this yet. This is going to be right, right near the end, just before we go to fight the um, final boss. So yeah, we can't, nothing really to see on that one, unfortunately. So now we're going to Gondolia, to Gondolia's railway station. Uh, something which I didn't do, which I am kind of a moron for. When, at the place where you enter, you should always look behind you because there might be chests and other sparkly spots for you to get more um, uh, rare materials and stuff. So always try and keep an eye out just in case. This one, yeah, this is, uh, this one I believe is just, I don't think there are any enemies here. I think this is all just rare um, materials. Oh, yeah, these things as well, which we're not going to be, we'll be finding out more about those uh, much later on, but they're really not, they're not all that much use at this point in the game. That's for later on once we've continued the story a bit. Yeah, there's nothing else. I don't think there's anything else here. Yeah, there's nothing else here. Like I said, it's just for materials, basically. Let's move on. Yep, time to move on. <laughs> Let's go to the Mangle Grove whale Whaleway Station this time. I keep, keep thinking I'm fucking up. The Whaleway Station. So let's head here. So that's kind of cool as well. The 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 area that it's based on. So for example, the Mangle Grove, this Mangle Grove area, <clears throat> it has a lot of uh, kind of jungle, and it's kind of really overgrown to kind of match the you know the area that it's based on on the ground. So that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, here these enemies are. These enemies fucking suck. Okay, so, uh, yeah, these enemies. Yeah, this area, there's a lot of enemies uh, here, which you, um, this area, um, yeah, the Mangle Grove Railway Station actually is really good for grinding. Because one, you've got, oh, fuck. One, you've got these enemies. So you've got the skeleton knights. I can't remember what they're called. Armful. That's what they're called. So yeah, armfuls are, give you a pretty good amount of experience. Um, they're kind of annoying in the fact that they can paralyze you, but whatever. And you've also got the um, walking corpse, which also causes a, a fair bit amount of damage. Uh, and you've got like the wandering hand as well. Uh, the Wailing Hand is really useful when it comes to grinding enemies, uh, grinding experience points. Because, ba oh shit, Hendrik's in trouble. The reason why he's really useful is because he calls for backup. So he keeps spawning new enemies. So as long as you keep one of them alive, you can get a metric fuck ton of experience. So yeah, this is me being like, okay. Gonna have to start healing up. Yeah, this didn't go particularly well. Multi thrust. And I just decided to get rid of this prick now. There we go. Um, and I'm still paralyzed. And he calls for another one, so yeah. Oh yeah, and you can also call in big enemies as well, which also. Like, look at this. So that's why you can kind of. Uh, get more enemies and yeah more heal please more heal um, so yeah it's a good place to grind for experience but yeah 
Yeah, let's get these out of the way. Yeah, kill two of them. Nice. Oh my god, how long is this paralysis going to keep going? This is bullshit. Oh god. More bloody hands. Yeah, that's also a thing that even though the you know the bigger enemies give more experience. So, you know, the fact that they can also summon um, bigger and stronger enemies and not just more of themselves does help with experience points. Oh no, they fucking brought a cure slime. Yeah, kill that motherfucker. They don't have a lot of health, but my god. They could really ruin your day by healing enemies. Right. Let's kill. Fuck you. <laughs> oh god. Thank god. Yeah, at this point I was just like, right, I've killed the healing hands now. <laughs> the healing hands are done. So I don't have to worry anymore. The healing hands are completely got rid of. Yeah, now I'm using multi-heal. Just to make sure that we're all at good health. Because this guy's boosted his attack power. Why would he try and boost his attack power again? Whatever. Yeah, Stone Guardians are beefy. They're very beefy. Oh my god. How are you still standing? Yeah. What that was was me just button mashing as quickly as possible to try and kill this fucker. And not realizing that I was, uh, last move I used with um, Serena was the healing. So yeah, that was kind of dumb. So now we just gotta kill this piece of shit. Serena, thank, thank you, Tom. <laughs> and should be dead. There we go. And the experience points we get for that? Yeah, we get eight 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 thousand seven hundred. More close to eight thousand eight hundred experience points. And we get a good uh, uh, item as well out of it, so yeah. Overall, it's pretty useful to fight these guys if you want to uh, gain experience points. Uh, we've got one more thing, I think. I think there's one chest, and then we're done here. Nope. Oh, there it is. Hi. Let's pick you up. What have you got? A metharang. That is a boomerang weapon, which is... Not really useful to me, but it's uh, pretty strong as far as boomerangs go. But anyway, join me next time for the next part of Dragon Quest XI, when we'll be finishing off uh, exploring the islands in the clouds, and then we'll be continuing with the story. So yeah, see you next time.